Hello, viewers. Today I'm making toasted sesame makgeolli, bokunke makgeolli. This is my own recipe. I hope you enjoy it. I was inspired by this bottle of peanut flavored makgeolli, peanut makgeolli from Jeju Island. I thought that was a nice bottle of makgeolli, and I thought. Sesame makgeolli might be a similar idea. So that's what I'm going to do today is make sesame flavored makgeolli. Now I have lots of other recipes on my channel. I have pine needle makgeolli. I have all kinds of fruit based makgeolli like, like uh, cherry or uh, berries. There's a lot of interesting recipes. I encourage you to try. Now, if you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe and click the bell to be notified of updates. I have a new video every Thursday. And please share this video wherever it is appropriate. Let's brew. So start off with the rice flour. I have here somewhere between 200 and 400 grams of rice flour. That's salgaru and somewhere between 0.9 and 1.1 liters of water, and then make juke by heating on medium. And keep on stirring. Now, I had a bit of a problem with measurement here. I don't exactly know how much I measured into the pot of the rice flour and the water, and I only noticed there was some kind of problem when I was stirring the juke here. This was, um, it seemed thicker than normal, um, and also the pot was more full than normal. So I knew I had added too much of something. At first I thought I added too much water, but because this is also thicker, well, I just don't know. Um, but in any case, this is juke. and I set it aside to cool to room temperature. And while we're waiting for it to cool, I'll mix up uh, Naruk. And this I am able to measure properly. 90 grams of Naruk and 200 milliliters of water and half a teaspoon of white wine yeast. And stir that up and uh, that's uh, Set that aside while we're waiting for the juke to cool. I stir up the juke every every so often and stir the Naruk and yeast mixture every so often. Eventually it's room temperature and I'll add them together and mix them carefully. And the more I mix this, the more liquid it's going to be. I have to be a little bit careful at the beginning, especially since this is more full than normal. Okay, but uh, I'll carefully fold it over and it'll loosen up and get more and more liquid. In the end, I'm going to end up stirring this for, for 15 minutes. That really incorporates a lot of air into it. That helps. And uh, it gets the enzymes, they start working and breaking down the, breaking down the rice. The enzymes in the new root start breaking down the rice. 15 minutes is a lot of stirring, but if you stir it for that long, it, it, uh, you can pour it into the jar. That's, a, that's what you want to be able to do. It at least has to be liquid enough to pour. You see, I've, I have quite a bit here. Well, whatever amount I used, um, so I apologize for the bad measurement at the beginning. Okay, keep the lid loose and uh, put this in the basement, ferment it in a dark, cool place. It's between 18 and 20 degrees Celsius down there. Then the next day, day one, let's take a look at it. And I see large bubbles. So it's fermenting away. I, I'm going to stir it twice a day for the first two days. So it's, it's completely liquefied. Look in the evening. Now the bubbles are smaller, but it's still bubbling rapidly. 
Then the next day, day two, you know, the bubbles are small, but uh, still plenty of them. And then uh, stirring it again, stir it twice on day two as well. And I'll prepare the godu bob. So start with 600 grams of chopped sal, wheat rice. Wash it gently, about 15 minutes. And soak for uh, at least three hours. And then drain and drain. So you notice this is more than 600 grams of rice. When I'm doing here, I'm doing multiple projects at once. I'm just going to take a portion of this rice corresponding to the two 600 grams at the start. So I'm using my stainless steel steamer. There's water in the bottom. I caught it up to boiling and I wait. Uh, I'm going to steam it for 40 minutes. Okay, now it's done. Carefully lift it out. And uh, I'm going to spread this out to cool. Again, this is more than 600 grams. So after it cools, I'm going to measure the total weight and uh, take the right portion of it, the 600 grams I want to, want to use. And here are the sesame seeds I'm using. Korean sesame seeds are usually browner, but these, uh, these ones I got from the Indian supermarket and they are white. So I'm going to take a quarter cup of chab ke that's sesame seeds, and that's about 33 grams. And I'm going to um, stir them every so often with, with my chopsticks. Actually, I should be stirring these at least every 30 seconds. And I waited a minute between stirring, and then it, oh, it suddenly uh, toasted rapidly. So I should have stirred it just a little more often here. Um, so that's pretty dark. That's that's dark enough. So I've toasted, I've toasted these. It only takes five minutes or so. And, okay, and they become uh, a lot oilier. I'm gonna put these in a bowl and let them cool down. So take a close look at them. Uh, yeah, they're oilier. These are bokunke, toasted sesame. Um, it's, these are fairly darkly toasted and they should be crushable between your fingers. That's how you can tell they're, they're done. I'm going to um, break these up in the blender. I want to get all the flavor I can out of them. So this is a toasted sesame powder. And here's the cooled rice, and this is the portion from 600 grams of raw rice. Okay, stir up my jar, the first stage, and then add the godubap, the steamed rice. And this is this jar is pretty much full. That's why I couldn't add more than more than 600 grams of rice. Now here's the toasted sesame powder. I'll add that. And then I'm going to stir this by hand. I want to break apart any clumps of rice. The steamed rice is clumped together. I'm breaking it up, mixing it thoroughly by hand. That's what you need to do. And wipe off any mess and uh, leave the lid loose. And then back in the basement. Um, Okay, so there's pretty big bubbles in there the next day. So it's it's fermenting away, got the, got the second stage going. Now let's do the match test. Uh, every day I'm going to lower a match into the jar and it goes out immediately at the top of the jar. That means it's fermenting vigorously. So every day I'm doing the match test um, and I'm also observing the bubbles in the, in the brew here. So it, it's uh, still fermenting well. There's some larger bubbles on top and the a lot of the sesame powder seems to uh, have floated to the top. 
and it's forming some kind of layers, but it's very cloudy. That might be because of the extra oil in the, in the sesame seeds. Now I have to lower the match a little more before it goes out. So now I, now I clearly see some layers here. Um, so what's going, it's still, it's still bubbling. Okay, now the match stays lit. So it's time to bottle. I boil my filter bag. Stir the brew one last time here and I'll dump it through the filter bag into my bowl. And I'm going to need to squeeze this. And uh, this seemed a little more difficult, I, either because of the oiliness or the small particles. Um, I have to rub the inside of the filter bag every so often so it doesn't get clogged up. It's a little harder to squeeze all the liquid out of this. And the leftover chigami is 312 grams, which uh, I think is pretty normal. Would be better if I knew exactly how much rice flour was in the first stage, uh, which I don't. But uh, this, uh, but the fermentation did work. So I'll give you my initial impressions after bottling. It's a bit oily on the surface. The aroma is a bit sour and burnt. The, that's the toasted oil. Um, the taste starts with sesame oil and the, the bitterness from the from the toasted sesame seeds. There's some uh, there's some texture from the from the sesame powder. There's a lingering sesame paste flavor, and there's plenty of alcohol. And I'm going to taste this uh, again in three days. It's been three days since I bottled my sesame makhli, and it's time to taste it. And the first uh, version I'm going to taste is, is it uh, mixed together, the wanju. So this is both layers mixed together. So it separated uh, pretty well, although it was cloudy. Um, you definitely can see uh, thin oily layer on top and it it smells oily yeah that's the most notable sort of toasted oil smell the texture is pretty thick It feels it feels pretty good. Taste still a bit still a bit harsh. Um, I get yeah. The aftertaste is the is the sesame flavor. So there's enough sesame flavor. I probably wouldn't want this any oilier than it already is. This is the real toasted sesame flavor. 
and I, I, I toasted it, it pretty dark, so um, that flavor is is uh, pretty strong. That has a little bit of bitterness to it naturally. But this does taste like sesame, and this uh, full strength. This is the full strength Wanju. Um, next, I'm going to try the diluted Wanju. That's that's really my Mockley diluted one to one with water. So this is the Wanju diluted one to one with seltzer water. And the texture is a lot lighter. Flavor tastes milkier. There's still plenty of uh, of uh, toasted oil aroma. There's enough sesame flavor, but it, it also tastes sweeter. Adding the water makes it taste sweeter. Okay, so this this is probably a better a better form. Yeah, um, not as heavy. Texture is better, and just a little bit sweeter. So I like this form better, diluted. And then uh, finally, I'm trying the Changju. That's the uh, top layer that I poured off first. Now it's um, it's relatively cloudy. I don't know if that's because of the oil um, or or uh, just because of my recipe. And this has more of a This is more of an alcohol aroma to it. It's, okay, so this has less sesame flavor. Still, still interesting flavor. And a little astringent. Okay, so not, not, a, not a bad flavor. Um, I, I, I was inspired by the, by the peanut makgeolli and that has a much more direct and uh, in-your-face peanut flavor. This is more. This is more subtle. Um, but I, I. But you definitely get a sesame aftertaste from this. Yeah. So that was a fun experiment. I was inspired by peanut makgeolli uh, and I made sesame makgeolli instead. Um, I apologize for my measurement mix-ups. I don't actually know what the exact recipe was for this, but uh, the uh, in the spirit of uh, rustic Asian rice wine, um, you can make adjustments and it's going to brew um, if you're off by a certain percentage, uh, it's still going to brew. You're still going to have alcohol at the end, uh, so that's that's a very uh, that's a very good lesson to know. Yeah, um, it's it's hard to mess up. Th these things are going to brew. This recipe is very robust. Uh, I hope you're enjoying brewing your own makgeolli and uh, drinking your own makgeolli. Thank you for watching.